Minerals trade sometimes happens in places plagued by conflict and corruption. This trade can fuel further conflict and drive human rights abuses. Simply banning minerals from any conflict or high-risk areas can cause even worse impacts. Forty million of the poorest people depend on artisanal and large-scale mining of minerals to make a living. Some of them operate in conflict-affected and high-risk areas. Small-scale artisanal mining operations may produce less than a quarter of the world's gold, tin, tungsten, tantalum, referred to as 3TG, as well as cobalt, silver, diamonds, colored gemstones, and so on. But because it's so labor-intensive, they employ 9 out of 10 of the world's miners. For those of us mining, trading, making, or selling minerals and their end products, it raises the question, how can we support legitimate operations while avoiding support for bad actors? At a basic level, we just need to know where and who our materials came from. Then we can check that they're not involved with any bad actors. But the reality is more complicated. If you're a processor, the raw materials may have passed through dozens of hands before reaching you. If you're a manufacturer, the materials you get may have already been mixed together from multiple sources. If anyone upstream from you was wrong about their source, you could be unwittingly supporting violence and corruption. The only way you can trust your source is to make sure they know their source. This must hold true of every stage, all the way back to the mines. The OECD Due Diligence Guidance provides one set of expectations for all of them. It's general enough to apply to all minerals, gold, tin, tungsten, tantalum, cobalt, silver, diamonds, colored gemstones, etc., and to everyone in the supply chain, miners, processors, traders, manufacturers, and end users. But it's also specific enough to evaluate your supplier's practices and hold them accountable to the same standards that you apply to your own company. The OECD guidance offers practical advice to help companies identify and mitigate risks. It's been developed from the combined knowledge of business, governments, and civil society, and it's now embedded in national laws in the US and EU. The OECD guidance forms the basis for responsible sourcing standards, including ours. The guidance outlines a five-step due diligence process to be integrated into your company management systems. Let's take a closer look at how to carry out each step, wherever you are, from mine to end user. To begin with, the guidance calls for establishing strong company management systems. There are five parts. First, adopt a company policy publicly committing your company to addressing, at a minimum, all of the major supply chain risks from the sample policy included in the guidance. Serious human rights abuses, forced labor, worst forms of child labor, torture, sexual violence, or inhumane treatment, support for non-state armed groups, support for private security forces in illegal control of operations, money laundering, bribery, and non-payment of taxes, crimes against humanity. Then get your suppliers to agree to the policy in their contracts. Try to help them build their capacity for due diligence. It's more effective and makes your job easier. At the same time, build your own internal capacity. Learn about due diligence, train your staff, assign responsibilities, and hold them accountable. Build a system of controls to ensure you know the source of your materials. At a minimum, it means gathering data and keeping reliable records on material purchases. For sourcing from high-risk areas, it involves a traceability system for minerals. A grievance mechanism provides you with an early warning system. Set up your own system so that anyone can report any issues they spot. And you can participate in existing industry grievance mechanisms that reach deeper into your supply chain. RMI worked with the LBMA and RJC to develop an online, cross-industry platform 
to screen and address grievances linked to smelters and refiners. Now that you have a policy defining the risks to be managed, the OECD guidance calls for you to identify and assess those risks in your own supply chain. Our examples here follow a typical 3TG supply chain, but the concepts apply to all material supply chains. The assessment process for upstream and downstream companies is different, but downstream companies should know the upstream due diligence process to understand what to expect of their upstream suppliers. For many supply chains, this is the smelters and refiners. Upstream companies will first need to identify potential risks in their own operations as well as with direct suppliers and with each order you receive from them. Find out who's involved in the supplier's business and who profits from the company, the standard Know Your Counterparty Process, or KYC. This verifies that your partner isn't involved in money laundering, tax evasion, or transactions benefiting armed groups. Then, with each order you receive, gather enough data and documentation to ensure you have sufficient evidence to know the material's origin. Compare the information you gather from the supplier and the materials with red flag criteria, both the OECD's and your own criteria. The OECD's red flags are raised when there are any links to conflict-affected or high-risk areas by materials, suppliers, or circumstances. The first three red flag criteria ask, was the area the supplier says the materials came from or passed through a high-risk area, or an area with limited known reserves, or a country where materials from high-risk areas are known to transit. For recycled gold, the criteria also ask if it was refined in a country where gold from high-risk area transits. The next two OECD red flag criteria ask, do the supplier or supplier suppliers have a stake in a company that operates in or supplies materials from a high-risk area? Or have they sourced materials from a high-risk area in the past year? The OECD guidance also identify red flag circumstances in the gold supply chain. This is when you find unusual circumstances raising suspicion that an actor was linked to abuses or conflict. and define your own red flag criteria for other possibilities like supplier deception or uncertainty. For example, if a supplier layers material through complex supply chains to mask its true origin. If a supplier's actions or materials raise a red flag, you have two choices. Source elsewhere or conduct enhanced due diligence to source responsibly from high-risk areas, which we encourage you to do. To conduct enhanced due diligence, upstream actors will need to map the factual circumstances of the supply chain and conduct on-the-ground assessments. First, you'll identify every actor in your supply chain all the way back to the mines and conduct Know Your Counterparty on all of them. Every transaction will need to come with complete traceability documentation. This allows you to trace the shipment back to its point of origin. Then your assessment team will conduct on-the-ground assessments of every supply chain actor. They'll also visit key stakeholders to get the full picture of what's going on there. They'll report their findings to management so they can respond to any identified risks. That's a short summary of upstream due diligence. Downstream actors need to understand it so they can evaluate the due diligence of upstream suppliers. Downstream companies will need to find out the smelter or refiner where their materials came from. This is the choke point in the supply chain. There are relatively few of these processors, and it's the last place where the materials are identifiable. That's why the risk level you face depends on the processor's due diligence capabilities. For diamonds and colored gemstones, there aren't choke points so you need to ask your immediate suppliers for their due diligence information. They, in turn, should be seeking this information from their suppliers and providing you with the names and due diligence information 
of the furthest upstream companies in the known supply chain, usually the rough stone exporters. Assess their due diligence to find out if they know their counterparty and materials. And if they identify any red flags, do they conduct enhanced due diligence? As we'll see, there are smelter and refiner audit programs to support due diligence efforts of downstream companies. When you identify risks, design and implement a strategy to respond to them by working with your supply chain. First, report the assessment findings to senior management so they can decide how to respond. Then, design and implement a risk management plan for the risks you identified. Stop engagement with suppliers committing serious abuses, like forced labor or supporting non-state armed groups. For all other risks, continue sourcing, but mitigate the risks. For example, if you find a case of bribery, develop a plan to improve and track performance of suppliers while continuing engagement. If there's no improvement within six months, disengage with that supplier. Make a plan for how to mitigate the risks you identified and continue to monitor the supply chain with support from stakeholder networks. The guidance recommends identifying, if possible, a choke point in the supply chain, the point where the mineral undergoes a transformation and where there are few actors. In the case of 3TGs and cobalt, this generally means the smelter or refiner. This is where the audit takes place. RJC and LBMA offer audits of precious metals refiners, and RMI audits gold and cobalt refiners, as well as tin, tantalum, and tungsten smelters. In the case of diamonds and colored gemstones, there aren't known choke points, so companies must decide if they'll require suppliers to undergo independent third-party audits. Every year, your company should report publicly on its due diligence efforts. The report should include an outline of the policy, how your company has engaged with suppliers, and the company's mitigation strategies for any identified risks. As your company continues to build on its due diligence efforts, these reports should grow broader in scope and richer in depth. Following the five steps of the OECD guidance offers reasonable assurance that your company is sourcing responsibly, even from high-risk areas. The higher the identified risk, the more intensive the due diligence and monitoring. By working closely with your suppliers, you can progressively improve due diligence practices. Responsibility for due diligence lies with your company, but industry initiatives by RMI, RJC, LBMA, and many others can support your due diligence activities. We each offer due diligence audit programs. Additionally, RJC audits and certifies the due diligence practices of all other company types in the jewelry supply chain, from mine to retail. Our shared online grievance platform can help screen and address grievances linked to smelters and refiners. To identify areas you consider to be high risk, use the RMI's new Country Risk Mapping Tool, as well as the European Commission's guidelines. We also provide further resources and e-learning lessons, explaining each aspect of the requirements and how to meet them. We invite you to take advantage of these resources as you progressively build effective due diligence in your supply chain. <laughs>